Too strange, my Theseus, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. But all the story of night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, more witnesseth than fancy's eyes, and grows to something of great consistency, but however strange and admirable. Here come the lovers, full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love, accompany your hearts. More than to us, what is your royal walks, your board, your bed? Come now, what masks, what music shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours? between our after supper and bedtime. Where is our manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Call Solistry. Here, mighty Theseus. Say, what abridgment have you for this evening? There is a brief how many sports are right. Make a choice on what your highness will see first. A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe. Very tragical mirth, merry and tragical. Tedious and brief. That is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as long as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious, for all in the play there is not one word apt, one player fitted, and tragical, my noble lord, it is, for Pyramus the thin doth kill himself, which, when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made mine eyes water, but more merry tears, the passion of loud laughter never shed. What are they that do play? Hard handed men that work in Athens now, which never labored in their minds till now, and have toiled their unbreathed memories with this same play against their new fuel. And we will hear it. Now, my noble lord, it is not for you, for I have heard it, and it heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in this world, unless you can find sport in their intents, extremely stretched and carnal cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go, bring them in, and take your places, ladies. I'd love not to see wretchedness or changed, and duty in his service perishing. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kind are we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake. Takes it in might, not merit. Where I have come, great clerks have purposed, to greet me with premeditated welcomes where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their practice accent and their fears, and in conclusion have dumbly broke off and not paying me a welcome. Love, therefore, in tongue-tied simplicity, in least speak most to my capacity. So please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. If we offend, it is with our good will that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will, to show our simple skill, that it is true beginning to our, of our end. Consider then, we come but in despite. We come not to come as m Okay. We do not come as minding to contest you. Our true intent is all for your delight. We are not here, that you should here repent you, the actors at by the actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow doth not stand upon points. He hath rid his prologue like a rough colt. He knows not to stop. A good more, my lord. It is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain. Nothing disordered, but all impaired. Who's next? Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show. But wonder on, tell truth, make all things plain. This man is Pyramus. If you would know, this beauteous lady Thisbe is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall, which did these lovers asunder. And through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper. At the which let no man wonder, this man with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn presented moonshine. For it is, for if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn. To me at Ninny's tomb, there, there to woe. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe coming first by night. 
did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled her mantle, she did fall. Which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. And on comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. Whereat with blade, with bloody blameful blade, he bravely broke his, his boily bloody breast. And Thisbe, tearing with mul in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord, one lion may, when many asses do. In this same interlude, it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall, and such a wall as I'd have you think that in it had a crannied hole or chink, through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall, the truth is so. And this cranny is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire Lyman Hare to speak better? It is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence! O oh, grim looked knight, O oh, knight with hue so black, O oh, knight, whichever art, when day is not. O oh, night, O oh, night, alack, 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 alack. But I fear that my Thisbe's promise is forgot. Thou wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, that stands between her father's ground and mine. O oh, wall, O oh, sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink that I may blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Joe shall shield thee well for this. But what see I? Who this me do I see? O wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. He thinks being sensible should curse again. No. In truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She's to enter now, and I to spy her through the wall. You shall see. It shall fall pat as I have told you. Yonder she come. Oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with wine and hair knit up in me. I see a voice, now the lie to the chink. Lying. To spy. <laughs> to spy and I... To... Do you want me to start the entire line over? Or... Where you messed up. Okay. I see a voice, now the lie to the chink. And I can... To spy and I can hear my Thisbe's face. <laughs> Sorry. I see a voice, now a lie to the chink. To spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love thou art? My love, I think? Think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace, and like Lymander, am my trusty still. And like Helen, I like Helen, till the fates me kill. Not Shelfless to Procris was so true. I, like Shelfless to Procreus, I to you. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall! I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at knees to meet me straightway? Tide life, tide death, I meet you without delay. And thus have I, wall, my part discharged so. And being done, this wall away doth go. Now is the mural down between the two neighbors. No remedy, my lord, when wall is so willful to hear without warning. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. The best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse, if imagination amend them. It must be your imagination then, not theirs. <sighs> if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. Here come two noble beasts in, a, a man and a lion. You ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear, 
the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough in the wildest rage doth roar. Then know that I once snug the joiner and lion fell, nor else lions damn for if I, as lions come and strike into this place, twere pity on my life. A very gentle beast of a good conscience. The very best at a beast, my lord, that ever I saw. This lion is very fox for his valor. True, and a goose for his discretion. Not so, my lord, for his valor cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox. It is well to leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. He should have won, have won the horn on his head. He is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man I, the moon, do seem to be. This is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lanthorn. How else is it the man I, the moon? He does not come there for the candle, for you see, it is already in snuff. I am aware of this moon. Would he would change? It appears by the small light of discretion that he is in the wane, but yet, in courtesy, in all reason, we must stay the same. Proceed, moon. All I have to say is that the lanthorn is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. Why, all this should be in the lanthorn, for all this are the, in the moon, but silence, here can these be. This is old Ninny's tomb. Where is my love? Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For, by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I take, I trust to take of truth this be sight. But stay, O oh spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dull is here. Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh dear, oh dainty duck, this mantle good. What? Stained with blood? Approach ye fairies fell, O oh fates. Come, come, and cut thread and thrum. Quail, crash, conclude, and quail. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lion's frame? Since lion vile hath here deflowered my dear. Which is, no, no. Which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears confound, out sword and wound. The pap of Pyramus, I, the left pap, where the heart doth hop. Ah! Thus die I. Thus, thus. Now am I dead, now am I fled, my soul is in the sky, tongue lose thy light, moon take thy flight, now die, 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 die. No die but a nice. For him, for he is but one. Less than a mace man, for he is dead. He is nothing. With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover and prove an ass. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? She will find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Methinks she should not use a long one for such a Pyramus. I hope she will be brief. A more will turn the balance, which Pyramus, which Thisbe is the better. He for a man, God warrant us. She for a woman, God bless us. She hath spied him already with those sweet eyes. And thus she means, by the lesser. Asleep, my love? What? 
dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak! Quite dumb? Dead? Dead? Atom? Must cover thy sweet eyes. These, my cherry lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone, are gone! Lovers make moan! <laughs> His eyes were green as leeks. His, oh, sisters three, come, come to me with hands as pale as milk. Lay them in gore, since you have shore with shreds this thread of silk. Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. Lay in Come, trusty blade, my breast in brew. Oh, and farewell, friends. Thus, this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. I and wall too. No, assure you. The wall is down that part of their fathers. Will it please you to see the epilogue or to hear a bergamask dance between two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no excuse. Never excuse. For when the players are all dead, there needs none to be blamed. Mary, if she that heretic had played Pyramus and had hung himself in Thisbe's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. And so it is truly and very notably discharged. But come, your Bergamask, let your epilogue alone. Okay. <laughs> now the hungry lion roars and the wolf behowls the moon, whilst the heavy plowman snores a weary task for doom. Now the wasted brands do glow, the wil whilst the screech owl screeching loud puts the wretch that lies in woe in remembrance of a shroud. Now it is the time of night that the graves all gaping wide, every one lets forth a sprite in the churchway pass to glide. And we fairies that do run from triple Hecate's team, from the presence of the sun following darkness like a dream. Now our frolic, not a mouse, shall disturb this hollow house. I am sent with broom to before to sweep the dust behind the door. To the house of gathering, of gathering light, by the dead of drow and drowsy fire, every elf and fairy spite hop as light from bird from briar. And this ditty after me, sing and dance it trippingly. First rehearse your song by rote, to each word a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace will we sing and bless this place. Now, until the break of day, through the house and each fairy stray, to the bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be. And the issue there create, uh, ever shall be fortune, so shall the couples three ever true and loving be. And the blots of nature's hand shall not in the issue stand, never mole, hair lip, nor scar, nor mark prodigious such as are despired in nativity, shall upon their children be with a field do concentrate. Every fairy shall take his gate, and each several chamber bless through the pl palace and with sweet peace and the owner of it least. Ever shall the safety rest, trip away, make no stay, me me all by the break of day. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this week an idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles do not reprehend, if you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, uh, if we have unearned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call, so good night until you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. <laughs> <laughs>